Um, so while everyone's sitting there and watching the screen, I thought maybe I'd... So how many of you have used Firebug? Oh, okay, sweet. Oh, good. A good amount. All right, well, let's just like do some quick things with it anyway, now that we have it open. So Firebug is like really, really sweet for JavaScript debugging, and it has quite a few capabilities. So the first thing it has is an actual console down here. So in the console, I can uh, I can actually execute JavaScript. So let me check and see what my variables are here. All right, sweet. So I know I have a um, so this executes JavaScript on this page. So I know that I have a global variable called map on this page. So I can just do uh, I'm going to call a function on the map that's going to turn that logo. Yeah, sweet. So now I actually have a an interactive control here just by that little line of code. The other thing I can do is say like, oh, okay, I want to find out something about this map. So let me run this function, and it'll show me the results here. And then the really cool thing, it doesn't just show you like the two string or whatever. It'll actually show you the entire object. So when I do get sensor, that returns a g dot long, right? So this is actually in the g dot long. That long is more than just a lat and a long because we store some other stuff here. So you can actually click on this and inspect the object further. And so since these are the so these are the various functions that I can call on a g dot long, and that actually displays that there. So it's actually really cool because you know you're used to like just debugging in JavaScript. Usually, like you do an alert. An alert, all you can do is put down like a freaking string, right? You gotta use if you use console.log, and so console.log is what you use if you want to just automatically output to this console. If you use console.log, you'll actually get the full objects and be able to inspect those objects, and that's like incredibly valuable because you can look at more than just you know what a standard two string would give you, right? Um, the other thing you can do if you want to execute more than just like a line of code. You can just click this button over here. It'll give you like a full console here. So we could do like, you know, for var i equals zero, i less than 10, i plus plus, uh, let's make something up, map dot, <laughs> map dot add overlay, dg marker, new, <laughs> make stuff up. <laughs> It's going to add a bunch of things at this map center, which is just going to look like one thing, but just roll with me here. Plus Good. Plus uh, yeah, what did I do wrong? I'm missing a uh, parentheses. Very good. Right? All right, sweet. So that just added 10 markers in the center of the map, an incredibly useful thing to do. Um, this is actually pretty cool. Like, I remember when we were doing the Santa tracking app, somebody mentioned, like, oh, it'd be cool if we had, like, actually a route of all the locations instead of just markers. So instead of like going back into my code and like playing with the code, just to see how feasible it was, I just opened up my app, went in here, and wrote like 10 line of code, and that showed me what the G polyline would actually look like. And I was able to look at that and go, eh, it doesn't look that good. I'm not going to put it into the actual code. So it can be kind of useful to have um, this thing here as well. So we can close that and go back to the normal one. And then I'll actually put that there. Um, so the other thing we have is a few other tabs. So the HTML, this is HTML and kind of CSS at the same time. This is really cool because you can like inspect the entire page. Um, and it'll give you both, you can see the generated HTML right there. Um, this is how you find out that the map is actually really complicated. Because it's made out of tons, like a marker. Oh my god, you should see the stuff that a marker is made out of. It's, uh, it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, we just fixed that book. Um, so here you've got tons of different layers and then you've got this thing is a this is an image map, and that's used for actually clicking the marker. Um, and then we there's also a bunch of other layers as well. And we can look at this thing here. So you can see this is div with a span. We can see this area. We've got that image there, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can actually so over here in the style, we can actually change things interactively. So let's try and get the whole where's the whole map div here? Let's move up in the DOM. Or you can try changing the yellow bar at the top like that. Oh yeah, I can do that too. But that's enough. But here, so here, so let's change the map size. Yeah. Um, so let's do uh, 200. All right, sweet. And then we'll do uh, 300. Very nice. Um, then let's say I want to do a border on the map. So in, instead of just changing the stuff that's already here, you can just actually just double click, and it'll even like freaking complete stuff for you if you don't remember what the correct stuff is. And then one, no, 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 10 picks solid. Oh, did you see that pale? Oh, that's awesome. Pale goldenrod. That didn't really show up very well, though. 10 picks uh, solid, pale goldenrod. Nice. Look at that pale goldenrod. See, I just learned a color. <laughs> that, is, that is a lot of learning right there. Um, 
so yeah, so you just double click and you can just add in add in more stuff like that, right? So that's also a really quick way of hacking with the CSS if you just want to like try out some different things. Instead of having to like go to your thing, try it out, reload the page. Um, you know, that's fine for when you're doing like UI and stuff, but when you're doing just CSS, this is a lot faster. The only thing is don't reload the page because you're gonna, you know, lose all your changes and not be able to check it out later. So this is uh, that's pretty much this tab here. I never I've ever not I've never really looked at these. See, Firebug has so many things that <laughs> the more you use it, the more you discover. It's like, um, this it's is like pretty the cool. Smithsonian of web development. <laughs> yeah. So here we can actually look at every single attribute of this DOM node, which is that's pretty nice. Uh, could be useful for stuff. Um, so then we just have things that show us what resources we load into the page. So like the CSS will just show us like any CSS we grab. So we got this CSS. This is really good. Like you know when you're looking at a page and you're like, oh, I really want to know like where the JavaScript came from. So then you look at the script thing and, and you look at the HTML and you're like, oh, okay, so I see this and you put it in the browser and that wasn't run, right. And it takes a while, right? So here I can be like, all right, I want to know where the CSA, CSS come from. This shows you every possible place. And then you can just quickly, and there's a little find bar here, so you can be like, all right, so there's where the border and I want to know where the GMLS element was, so there it is, right? So that's really cool. It makes it so much easier and like trying to, this is really good for debugging other people's apps, right? When you really want to like understand someone's app, this is the fastest way of doing it. Um, and then we have the script tag. This is the same thing when you're looking, especially at map pages, people put their JavaScript everywhere, right? So a lot of times I'll open up this first and look and see and find the one that looks most likely to be the map thing. This, you can actually see how um, it works, like the Google Maps API works. We go and we have this like bootstrap script that will then load in the, um, the script for that particular version of the API. So we're on 2.100 right now. So if you wanted to look at it, this is what the Maps API looks like. It's pretty sweet. Yep. Yeah. Very obfuscated. Yeah, so that's what we call obfuscated. Um, it just means that it renames the variables. So as I was mentioning, a lot of you guys are in the Maps API um, code lab. We're getting the A has no properties. You've noticed that the first <laughs> argument of every function is A. So it's not the most useful error in the world. The better way of um, debugging there is actually just to look at the reference and make sure you're passing in like the correct variables. But it does tell you that you've passed in something funny. And then you could actually you know, inspect your various uh, objects and see you know, what isn't the correct type. So oh. this is our script tag, yeah? I was going to mention also that uh, script, the script um, tag also, or the little tab right there, also has like, if you click to the left of one of those lines, mm -hmm. it'll actually set a breakpoint. Right. So if you're more familiar with the standard um, like debugging tools, maybe for the, your desktop apps, if you've used it for like 102 or 402 or whatever, it's really nice because when you, you could um, mm -hmm. actually go back and run the script again, and it'll actually stop and it'll show you a little <laughs> variable inspection in the panel on the right. And uh, it's just, if you're having this error that, that's just really driving you crazy, it's, it's a really good way to, to help you figure it out. Right. Uh, then we have the DOM. Okay, the net tab. The net tab is also really cool. What the net tab does, it shows you every single like uh, HTTP request, right? And so we've been talking a lot about that, and now you can actually like see it, right? And it breaks it up into several different types. So we have all of them. We have just HTML requests, just CSS, just JS, just XHR, which stuff is that's sent with the XML HP request. Just images and just flash, right? The one I'm usually on the all, but sometimes I'll go to the just JS. Um, so here, what I want to show you here. So the JS we got is um, some stuff for the Maps API. This is actually a viewport request. This is how we get the copyright data that you see here. So the copyright data actually changes when you change viewport. So when you change the viewport significantly enough, we'll go out and ask for more, like more copyrights. And then when we get it back, uh, we'll just call a function that adds the new data to the screen here. And you can see it's just passing in JSON, as we talked about. Um, the other thing I want to show you is how the actual geocoder works. So let me clear all these so we can see what this is. So this is using our JavaScript uh, geocoder. So I click Go. And you can see it does a geo request and then a viewport request. So the geo request is a geocoder request. So we can look at the params that it sent. Um, so we can see uh, this is the address that we sent in. Right? That's what we entered in the form. And then this is the actual response. So remember I was talking about callbacks that surround JSON data? This is exactly what we're doing here. Um, the reason this callback is named a, a random number is because you could have any number of uh, client uh, JavaScript geocoder requests. So we need to come up with some random function name so that they don't collide. Right? So here we have, we call it, we pass in the data, 
and then we're able to parse this in our script. But this is a really good way of like instead of having to like do debugging like in your code in case of like getting like if you're getting weird output like if your geocoder is failing and you don't know why, an easier thing is just to look at the response here because sometimes you'll get like error codes because we have various error codes like wrong address, bad key. Um, instead of having to write that into your JavaScript, if it's a one-time thing, it's easier just to look at these and see what's going on. Um, so I, I highly recommend like checking out the net tab. Uh, it'll be really useful. The other thing it's good for is like looking at latency. So looking at how long your uh, your page takes to load, because it'll actually show you you know like the milliseconds everything takes to load. Like for example, in this one, you could see that if I could find a way to get this iw2.ping yeah. down from 649 milliseconds, you know maybe that would help. Uh, Right. The user experience. So when you look, there's a great article online about reducing latency, and the first thing it has is talking about the number of HTTP requests that have to happen before page loads. And one of the ways of reducing that is to do something called um, CSS image sprites, because that's the philosophy of that is like if you always use like the same like four little icons in your page. So example, let's look at this. So we have IW close, IW plus, full screen, minus. So these are all these little info window icons. It would actually be better if we combine them all into one file, and then we have to use CSS, because you can use CSS to effectively crop out what part of the image you want to show. So that's actually a better way of doing things, and we actually are about to do that on code.google.com in an effort to like reduce our latency there. Um, so that, that's a really good way of seeing um, what's actually what it looks like when your page is loading. We could actually look at code.google.com right now and see how it is. We've been working on it as we go along here. I guess long story short is you should use this tool if you develop in Firefox. So, yep. so um, for the <laughs> computation, yeah. Yep. <laughs> do you have to make it work in IE? Oh, yes. That's a good question. Uh, I mean, wait, are you asking like work in IE or look perfect in IE? Because that's two different things. Like there's working functionally in IE, like the JavaScript works, and then there's like does the layout look exactly the same in both browsers? I'm going to work in IE first. Yeah, first, definitely make it work in IE. If the layout is off in thin browsers, like if you actually look at our registration form, the, uh, the, yes. the layout is off in some browsers, right? Uh, especially when somebody decides to name their team, click, 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 click. Like 100 times. Yeah, they actually did it originally 100 times, but we were using 12. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, there may be small differences in the layout between the browsers, but I think the important part of People spend apps, like weeks trying to get yeah. So, to optimize it, so, so pixel perfect, we don't need. But functionally working, that'd be good to see. Yeah. Well, except for some people at Max. Oh, parallels? I can't have parallels on things. Uh, you're welcome to use my IE. I have IE6 and IE7. There's a tip for you guys that are running uh, Windows. You can download a program called Multiple IEs. It'll let you uh, use both IE6 and 7. Well, you do when you're, because that's a problem, right? Because if you don't have it, then you never know what it's like for the poor. Because, I mean, half the bugs we get are IE6 bugs, and it's really hard to fix bugs if you can't, like, reproduce them. So you, like, you go and you're like, well, I think I know what the fix is, and you go do it, and then you, like, IM somebody, like, hey, you have IE6, right? Do you want to achieve my bug? You know, that doesn't really scale well. That's actually what I do with Safari bugs right now, uh, because Safari 3 isn't exactly the same as Safari 2. So she comes over Safari to bugs. the yeah. cube, and yeah. she says, where's your laptop? And then she... And then she takes it and she goes like away for like an hour and then where's my laptop? You know? Pretty fun. I do, the, fix it. I do the same thing with IE. Yeah. <laughs> so basically you can see us like in our cubes, so somebody will always wander over and be like, can I use your Safari? Can I use your IE? So you have to share. Because it actually is important to make things work. Because imagine if every single USC computer sold IE6. Would you feel good if the whole world decided to leave you out and say like, well, we don't care about you, right? Because sometimes you can't help what your company or what your school uses. So we need to support it until we're convinced that nobody in the world uses it anymore. Or a small one. Well, like, I think our rule is like, what, like 1% or 0.1%? I don't know. Yeah. I think 0.1%. Yeah. Actually, uh, one question. Any yeah. Idea? Considering supporting IE6, there are so many things in IE6 which have problems, and yeah. even Microsoft is giving that one. I know. <laughs> like Windows elements? No, wait for IE7. Yeah. I mean, so IE, there's a difference between, yeah, IE7 is actually pretty easy to get stuff working in. IE6 is really where a lot of problems come. Just try to support IE7. Yeah, okay. So IE7, 
And Try to make it work in some version of IE, preferably the newer the better. <laughs> but if you make it work in IE5, we'll be really impressed. It's like bonus points. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand that. So that shouldn't be, yeah, if you only have 24 hours, just make sure that no JavaScript error is in IE7 and it's basically functional. Here's one trick that everyone, like this is the most common error we've had uh, in Firefox. I mean, you think this is really minor and you think people would get used to it and never happen. So let's say you have a, where's text edit? Okay. So a, uh, what is it? An array, right, in JavaScript. So blah <coughs> equals, um, or I say more like an object, right? So. Bar blah. <laughs> blah. All right, whatever. Hi, hi, hi. All right, notice the comma at the end. Uh, let's make this bigger. <laughs> Font. It also means, oh. Bigger. Why are we having this? Control shift plus? No. Apple T. I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, ready? So Firefox is okay with this. IE is not. And this is actually the most common error um, that I've seen between the two things. Like, it's really simple, but it's just that people always, you know, copy and paste when they modify arrays and they paste in the commas. So this is a good thing. That's always, I, that's the first thing I check when I got, like, a, you know, an object expected error in IE is an error like this. So that's a bad thing about Firefox. I wish that it didn't accept this. I wish that it was actually like, no, you can't have a comma at the end of your array, because um, then we wouldn't have to worry about checking an IE for just for that. Because if you think about it, like really, Firefox should also error, because that's not good syntax, right? So yeah. You know why the browser, right? Just used to. Uh, well, I mean, if you have a Mac, you'll probably have it work in Safari. The more browsers, the better, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but we understand there's 24 hours, so. Yeah. We're not going to go checking it on every single bus or any competition. Well, I mean, we're not going to be. She might. Except so far. The really important thing is, you know, demo. Yeah. Hey, there's actually one other thing that might be useful for you. There's something called a web developer toolbar for Firefox. I just noticed that he has this. So this is a really easy way to disable JavaScript, uh, disable cache. Make you download. Yeah. Oh, I made you download it. <laughs> uh, disable cookies, and then um, I always use it for the view image information. Um, because it's a really quick way of like seeing how a page is made up of images. So it would actually open up like this thing that shows every single image on a page. Um, and so that's a really easy way of like, you know, maybe taking people's images. Um, so yeah, no, but it's also really useful in, in maps because then you can see, so I always do this in maps to show how maps are made out of a lot of different images. So if we do a view image information there, and if the stupid spinning wheel of death didn't appear. That's actually the reason I didn't like the Mac was that spinning wheel. Um, so this is our giant. This is our giant info window image. <laughs> just in case you had an info window this big, we will display it. Um, and this is our shadow. <laughs> so you, we use a lot of fancy CSS positioning to get this stuff to work. And you see a marker is made out of the foreground um, transparent that's used for clicking, um, the print images, the shadow. Um, there should be a few other ones as well. And here's all the images that make it up. So it's really useful for looking at like the X, Y, Z of it, for understanding how tile layer works, work, et cetera. And then a few other things for the logo. So if your, shadow, if your shadows are transparent to PNGs, then how does it work in early ID? We use something, the, the alpha loader filter. So that's a common, uh, you'll see it. Anytime you want to get pings to, like, to work in like IE, like on top of other things for IE6, you have to use the alpha loader filter. There's so a JavaScript you can actually go into Yeah, it's called fixed ping, I think, right? Yeah. So that's that's something you'll see. Um, that's another one of the really annoying IE6 things so as well. There's a couple of cases where it doesn't have a so Right. Function. Yep. I found one of those cases and got really annoyed. Um, there's more things you can do here, too. It's just display like all this information. Clear the cache if you want to clear it really quickly. This is a really quick thing. Display a ruler, just in case you wanted to like measure stuff on your page. <laughs> And oh, sometimes right. I use this for like positioning things if I want to see. I have my own little. What do you? Yeah, like a Firefox extension. For oh really? But yeah. mine's better. I didn't actually know about that. Either. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, page magnifier. Just <laughs> when you guys are browsing um, photos. And uh, yeah, so this is really cool too. So those are like my um, my two recommendations for Firefox stuff, but. Uh, and the other one is to use IE tab, which is the extension that just makes it really easy to open every every page inside Firefox in the IE rendering That's engine. Windows only. 
Yeah, that's Windows only, okay. So that makes it really quick, so I know you don't want to open IE, but when all it takes is like clicking one little icon, then it becomes a lot less painful. A lot better looking well, on IE. Yeah, I know, but then you don't have to see, the worst part about IE is, have you seen the ugly tabs? They're like, I don't understand, like, they're really ugly. <laughs> I just, I'm not being like, subjective, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know, but that's really, because that's the part I actually don't like, you know, I like the Firefox tabs. So it's cool because they use the rendering engine and you can see what it looks like in IE, so it's really fast. So, yeah. So any other questions? <laughs> Before we end this, the last day of workshops? Otherwise we'll just keep showing your favorite things. <laughs>